What's the crack, lads? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the Liverpool Club Selection Player Review. We're going to be taking a look at this pack and just having a look and seeing if it's any good, right? Because there are a few people asking me about it as usual every Monday and Thursday. We do do the reviews. You've got a 96 rated Robertson, Diaz and Allison front and center. Now, this Diaz looks absolutely insane if you look at his stats. But you do get three chances at this player with the 300 coins, 100 coins each. You've got a chance of getting one of these eight players, right? So these are the eight players. We're going to head over to Football DB in a second to take a look at some of them. Allison, Trent, Nunes, Thiago, Van Dijk, uh, Diaz, Robertson, and Henderson, right? Now, look, for me, um, depending on where you are with your eFootball journey, I say this all the time. But if you are looking, you know, for your end game squad or you're looking for a squad that's going to take you to Division 2, II, Division 3, or even Division 1, there are only probably two players in here that I would recommend. And that would be Diaz and Van Dijk. Because I do think that there are comparable right backs and left backs that are really good. Nunes has a lot of issues with his card, which we'll get into. Thiago and Henderson are both kind of like, you know, by the dozen. There's a lot of players that are equal to, you know, even be better than these two guys. So I would say, right, Allison as well, his standard card or else Donnarumma or Oblak or Courtois standard card is very, very um, much kind of like of the same with this Allison card in terms of if you are going to spin, right? But I do think, obviously, if you don't have Van Dyke, Diaz, or Trent, I do think that the three of these are probably the pick of them. And I would say that Van Dyke and Diaz are probably both of the best. If you don't have a top class winger um, and you're looking for somebody that can create a, a, an instant impact, obviously, Trent swings it as well because of his A form this week. But let's get into it, right? So we're going to start with Henderson. Um, standard form, interception, one touch pass, true pass. And now, obviously, all these players are kind of a little bit different than when we were reviewing before because you can add additional skills with the player skill training. Um, so, I mean, if you add to Henderson even something as similar or something as like simple as like a double touch, you will be able to have like a lot of different kind of animations on the ball. And he's got some fairly decent stats. If you actually look at his stats here, there are some very, very decent stats here that you do have, including the player skills and a mixture of both. Like true passing, one-touch pass, weighted pass and pinpoint crossing is huge. He also has a long ball expert uh, to be able to kind of, you know, pass the ball from deep. Even going sideways, this is a good card to have. But then you just have a couple of the, you know, the, the downfalls of this card is that like speed and acceleration you don't need. But I do think for a CMF, unless you're playing three CMFs or a DMF and two CMFs, and then, you know, you're out wide players and maybe playing like a 361 or something like that. I don't think that, you know, if you are having a box to box lads, you definitely need to have somebody that can get up and down the pitch like a lot with a bit of pace and a bit of power. And I think Henderson is just a little bit slow and clunky for that. Because even when we have him maxed out here, like he goes to a 90 CMF, but you've only got 70 acceleration um, and 90 aggression is big. Stamina at 94 is huge, but the rest of his stats are just kind of average. I mean, if you take the likes of even Goretzka or somebody like that, they're going to be a lot better than Henderson. And that's just kind of how it is at the moment with a lot of the, the meta center midfielders. So I don't think, you know, unless you're a Liverpool fan or a big Henderson fan, um, you are probably going to you know, get players better in that role. Now, saying that, from talking to a few people, they've said that Henderson is a bit of a beast. Him and McTominay are kind of like underrated players. Um, But yeah, I mean, for me, it is a bit of a miss uh, with this card. So moving on, we do have a Robertson as well. Very solid left back. Obviously, you've got one touch pass, man marking, interception. He's got a wavering form. Fighting spirit is huge. And if you were to stick on, you know, maybe blocker on this card, it would be an unbelievable um, and a very, very good defensive uh, left back, right? Which are very kind of rare to have because usually with your left and right backs, you have them either one way or the other. They're either defensive or else they're, you know, attack minded. So to have a kind of a mixture of both, which we have here at Robertson, the way we've been trained up, you've got 82 defensive awareness and 79 offensive awareness. That gives you 90 acceleration, 93 aggression, low pass of 75 with his player skills is going to be just enough. And I also like the fact that you've got 91 stamina, which is huge. The aggression is a big one as well. The one touch pass on this card is, is monstrous. If you were playing him as a kind of a wing back to be able to build the attack kind of like Roberto Carlos, and he's going to be more solid defensively than Roberto Carlos with all those defensive skills. So that is just something to keep in mind as well. We've also got Trent. Trent is one of the guys that like you either love him or hate him. I've seen a lot of people play with this guy in, you know, the, his 
his English version. Um, the England version of this card, which we'll get into in a second, is extremely similar to this card um, that they've released. You've got one touch pass. You've also got a wavering form. He's on A rating this week, which is big. You do have one touch pass, as I said, true pass and low lofted pass, pinpoint crossing and early crosser. This guy is probably the ultimate uh, wing back at the moment. I would say that he's probably one of the best there. But the reason why I find it hard to recommend him is that he doesn't really operate as a traditional right back. If you're used to playing like a four at the back formation, which are, you know, either three CBs and a right back or else, um, you know, a left back, a right back and two CBs, you know, one kind of destroyer CB and one like build up or something like that. I do think that he does take a bit of getting used to. He's kind of like Carlos. He is very attack based. You will need to manually defend with him and position him a lot more than you would a traditional right back that is going to be defensive minded. Um, but if you are used to that, he is definitely one of the best crosser, crossers in the game. His play style is cross specialist. He's got every uh, single player skill and play style that you could possibly want with early crosser, long ball expert. And then you've also got weighted pass, pinpoint cross and outside curler. And, of course, you've got that one-touch pass to quicken things up as well. So, yeah, I definitely think this is a good card. If you look at him maxed out here, he goes to 93 with this version of him here. But you've got 85 acceleration, 90 stamina, 82 balance, which is big because he doesn't have much physical contact. But then the low lofted pass uh, are 81 and 86. So that's very, very good as well as having kind of like a balanced offensive and defensive awareness. So that's something to keep in mind. We've also got, who else do we have? We have Tiago here as well. Obviously, just to have a look at Tiago. I don't really recommend Tiago too much. There are a lot better center midfielders there, but his passing and dribbling are insane. 94 balance as well are, you know, really, really, really quality. We've also got uh, Nunes here who we'll take a look at. The thing I like about Tiago, lads, is he has got a lot of really nice player skills, as you can see there. We've also got Nunes. This Nunes card, lads, when eFootball 22 came out, he was insane. He had double touch. He had unwavering form. He had, you know, absolute buckets of, buckets of pace. Um, and he was one of the best cards that they had released. But I think as time has gone on, uh, I think that lack of balance in the switches they've made, the changes they've made to balance and the balance stat, I think kind of come back to haunt this card. And it is a bit of a pity because he was a monster at the start of the game. But yeah, I don't really recommend this guy leading the line for you. Obviously, you can stick him up as part of a two-man centre-forward partnership. But to be honest with you, any player can play in a two-man uh, partnership. You know, it's 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 easy to kind of interlink and interchange with this game. We also have Diaz, who's one of my favourite players from way back even though I'm a Manchester United fan, lads, this guy in eFootball is insane. You've got everything that you could possibly want in this card. Unwavering form. He is on C rating, but unwavering form. Double touch, chop turn. And of course, you've also got outside curler and no look pass, which is kind of a bit flashy. You've also got all these play styles that you want. But the real, uh, the real, you know, kind of like... Um, advantage of Diaz lies in his just his pure pace and power right you've got your dribbling stats in the 90s ball control 91 dribbling 94 and tight possession 91 and then speed 90 86 stamina with 82 balance and 97 acceleration when you have him on a proper player form you're going to have 99 acceleration and like 92 speed 84 85 balance and his ball control like in the mid 90s so you know what you're going to be getting this guy is a traditional winger he's not going to be able to finish he's not going to be able to pass or bring many players into the game this guy is all about stretching out wide and being you know the best player that he could possibly be as a winger right his standard card is just minus two on everything with 29 levels this guy is kind of slightly uh, better than that than the standard card that they released because this card is minus two on everything with the same levels this version of him is the best that they've released so i definitely think if you have used diaz before i know i'll definitely be trying to spin him because he was one of my favorite players to use the lack of form is the biggest problem with this guy if he was on an a or b form he'd be a no-brainer we also have van dyke lads that we're going to take a look at we've covered van dyke a lot you know what you're getting with van dyke you're getting a player that is one of the best in the game but i think since the last update I just feel like Van Dyke is getting harder and harder to play with. He's so clunky on the ball. Um, I don't know what they've changed with his in, in terms of his first touch and that. Obviously, tight possession is a hugely important stat, and he's very low on that compared to other centre-backs. But he does have excellent player skills, blocker, interception, everything. Um, I would be tempted if you could, you know, get uh, double touch or something on this Van Dyke to be able to get out of... Um, if you had a double touch player skill, I know it's kind of like... 
yeah, a weird thing to suggest, but if you could get it, you could get out of a lot of difficulty with this guy and use a lot of first touch passing uh, or first time passing um, or first time touches. And then if you had one touch pass, he would be a monster just clearing the ball. But you know what you're getting with Van Dyke lads, right? You've got 16 levels to go on this guy and he is pretty decent. But I think if you look at his standard version of the card, it is identical. It's identical to this card, especially with the fact that you get one extra player level with this version of Van Dyke. Now, the Netherlands pack that they released, he's identical to that, to that as well. The only difference being here that this Netherlands pack has got minus one aggression and 84 tackling, which is plus one. And he's also got plus two on physical contact with minus two stamina. The Showtime card, again, you can see how identical these cards are. The only difference with his Showtime card is he's actually got worse defensive awareness than this card, but he's got better physical contact and tackling. So yeah, this standard version is more than enough, I think, especially for the way Van Dyke is. But if you do spin him, I mean, you can see exactly what you want to be doing here with him. And that is to just max out his defensive capabilities, right? If you max out this defensive capabilities to like around that, you're still going to have a lot of issues with this card in terms of, you know, dribbling, tight possession, pace, whatever way you want to do it. Um, aerial, early, aerial strength is going to be very good as well on this card. But I, yeah, I do recommend Van Dyke. He just takes a bit of getting used to. And then last but not least, we have Allison, who's your traditional goalkeeper. Very good uh, keeper, somebody that I've used quite a bit. But I just feel like with the changes in the game, once you get into 90 reflexes, you are going to have to make a lot of manual saves with this guy. Um, that's just kind of the way that this card is. He's a good he's a good keeper, but there's just a dime a dozen of these keepers, lads, um, to be honest with you. He does have some good player skills, obviously. Um, but I do like the fact that um, he has low long throw and low punt. But I don't like the fact that he has D rating this week and he only, only has standard form. So... That is it for the Liverpool pack, lads. As I said, I would probably recommend Diaz and Van Dijk. Van Dijk has kind of become a bit trucky in like how you handle him and stuff, but I still think he's a monster. Robertson and Trent, if you're able to play out wide and you like those kind of wing back positions, they are monsters in the game. It's just hard to recommend them because a lot of people don't like to play with a 3-5-2 with two wing backs. You know, they either want our full backs to be defensive or they want them to be kind of like wingers or like left and right midfielders. So it is kind of a hard one to recommend. So that is it for me, lads. I'll be back in a bit. Peace.